Welcome inside Carver Gym. One final time on this semifinal Friday, Sean Wally, Robert Lowry, our entire GNAC.TV crew as the GNAC Women's Championship semifinal final game of the day. One ticket punch to tomorrow's championship. Montana State Billings will play tomorrow at 7.30. The winner of this game gets to meet them, and it will be Seattle Pacific or Western Washington. Well, of course, the men's bracket was filled out a little bit earlier today. It was number six, Northwest Nazarene, all over number two, Montana State Billings, 54 to 38 to advance to the title tilt tomorrow night. And then the game that just preceded, uh, followed that on the men's side, it was number one, St. Martin's, knocking off Central Washington, 72 64. So, Northwest Nazarene and St. Martin's, the men's championship tomorrow. 5:15 will be that game, and then the championship or five o'clock tomorrow, I should say, the championship game. 7:30 tomorrow night, Montana State Billings, number two, looking to uh, see who they're going to play. Will it be Seattle Pacific, which interestingly snapped a nine-game losing streak to the University of Alaska Anchorage last night? to advance to tonight's contest with that 69-65 win. You know, uh, also, they have a nine-game losing streak, too, the Falcons. Yeah, Western Washington. They're going to try to ba break back-to-back nine-game losing streaks. That's a, that's a tall order against this Western team. Western Washington looking to see what they can do in the postseason. They went all the way to the national championship game last year. They'd love to obviously get back there. But a long way between then and now, they've got to take care of business here tonight. Well, last year in the GNAX, Western in the quarters knocked off St. Martin's 60 to 54. In the semis, they beat Montana State Billings 69 to 63, who would again be their opponent tomorrow night if they're victorious. And in the finals, Western lost to Central Washington 57-46 last year. Regardless of that loss, the, uh, the, they had enough juice to make it into the West region based on their ranking and statistics during the year. In the quarterfinals of the West region, they defeated the University of Alaska Anchorage 76-64. In the semis, they avenged that championship loss to Central 64-58. In the finals, they knocked off Cal State East Bay 73-59. Then it was on to the Elite Eight for these Vikings. They beat Valdosta State 58-55 in the Final Four. They knocked off North Georgia 74-68. Then on the finale was Glenville State beating Western 85-72 despite a 27-point performance from somebody we're going to see here tonight, Brooke Walling. Brooke Walling's had an incredible season for Western Washington, really taking this team under her wing. Well, she's just had a, or she's a tremendous player when you look at the statistics. She just fills out the sheet. Uh, if, if, she, if you had a fantasy player, she'd be the kind of player you would want to play, have because for the GNAC, first team all GNAC selection this year, Ninth in the league in scoring, second in the league in rebounding, second in the league in field goal percentage, fourth in assists, fifth in free throw percentage, ninth in steals, second in block shots, and fifth in offensive rebounds. In her second year with the Vikings doing great things, but hey, that's not all. A well, lot of players on this Western squad can do damage that SPU and Coach Mike Simonson have to watch out for. Well, you've got a great core starting five. Walling, Katrina Jamaica, the Dykstra sisters, Molly Olson. That's a great start. But you can bring players like Riley Truitt off the bench, Monique Fierke off the bench, Maddie Grandboys off the bench, Molly o or Mason Oberg, I should say. That four I just mentioned there, that could be a starting group for many teams in the GNAC. Seattle Pacific put together an all-around great game yesterday. Many players in double figures. They'll need a similar performance here tonight. Well, the thing you, you can't overlook is the fact that that was the best shooting night of the season for Seattle Pacific. Nearly 61% 
from the field, 61% to get the victory against the University of Alaska Anchorage. Matter of fact, their previous best had been a 50 point or a 50% field goal shooting night against Montana State Billings earlier in the season. But again, 60 and a half, that eclipses it by a ton. And if they shoot the ball at that kind of pace again tonight, which I think is nearly impossible to do that back-to-back -back nights, but you never, you never, I'm smart enough to know you never say never. As soon as I say they're not going to do it, watch them come out and do it. If they shoot around that clip again tonight, that could be the thing that uh, really is able to keep them in the contest and maybe come up with a huge victory here against Western tonight. And let me ask you this. How much pressure is on Western Washington? Home crowd. I've seen this before. Home teams in their first game in a GNAC championship before their own home fans. That is not necessarily always the easiest thing to do as that collar starts to get just a little bit tight. Definitely a home court advantage tonight for Western Washington. As you can see throughout Carver Gym, fans filing in and a lot of fans in the seats as we get set for Seattle Pacific and Western Washington. Western Washington 22-3 and on the regular season. Seattle Pacific 14-12 and and the one victory yesterday here in the tournament. Yep, 15-13 and on the year under their fourth year head coach Mike Simonson who hit his 50th career victory yesterday in his career. That's what makes it a career victory obviously, the Department of Redundancy Department there. But uh, Simonson with 50 victories for Seattle Pacific the opposite number, Carmen Dolfo. She passed 50 victories uh, about uh, a couple of decades ago. Carmen comes on floor tonight. His 30, er, her 31st year at Western Washington. 663 wins, 253 defeats, a 72% better than a 72% winning percentage. Her 600th win was against who? Seattle Pacific. And the we'll get you over to Brian Western Young, Washington. public address announcer here at Western Washington University. Fans, at this time, the GNAC would like to honor the memory of former St. Martin's Athletic Director, Coach Bob Grisham, who passed away unexpectedly in January. Prior to his retirement this October, Bob was the longest serving athletic director in GNAC history and spent a total of 37 years in service to St. Martin's University. Bob made countless contributions to the overall success and growth of the GNAC, including playing a key role in the implementation of the conference basketball tournament beginning in 2011. It is a championship event that St. Martin's hosted a GNAC record six times under his leadership. The 2023 GNAC Men's and Women's Championship Basketball Games are dedicated to the memory of Bob Grisham. Thank you. Now, let's meet the starting lineups for tonight's contest. First, the designated visitors from Seattle Pacific. At guard, a 6'2 sophomore from Beaverton, Oregon. Number two, Maya Hoff. At guard, a 5'7 sophomore from Mugatillo, Washington. Number 14, Hunter Biren. At guard, a 5'9 sophomore from Portland, Oregon. Number 20, Anna Eddy. At forward, a 5'11 senior from Stanwood, Washington, number 22, Ashley Alter. And at forward, a 6'2 senior from Beaverton, Oregon, number 30, Natalie Hoff. Seattle Pacific is coached by Mike Simonson. Now, let's meet the starting lineup for the designated home team, the Western Washington University Vikings. At guard, a 5'10 senior from Everson, Washington, number one, Avery Dykstra. At guard, a 5'10 sophomore from Everson, Washington, number three, Riley Dykstra. At forward, a 6'3 junior from Vancouver, Washington, number 15, Brooke Walling. At forward, a 5'11 senior from Everson, Washington, Number 20, 
Katrina, Jamaica. And at guard, a 5'9 senior from Napavine, Washington, number 32, Molly Olson. Western Washington is coached by Carmen Dolfo. Just about set for tip off here in Bellingham. A look at the Western Washington Vikings after starters were announced for both teams. Sean Walla here with Robert Lowry. Four 10 minute quarters will decide who plays in the championship tomorrow against Montana State Billings. Well, if Western Washington University gets, uh, gets out hot, it's gonna be a tough night for Seattle Pacific. But if the Falcons can stay close, all of a sudden, uh, things become a little more tenuous for the home team on their home court here. There's got a couple of interesting matchups. Walling against Natalie Hoff, I think, is going to be an interesting one in the paint. We'll keep an eye on that one. And the two you mentioned will jump it up. We are underway from Bellingham, Washington. Fourth game of the day and final. Molly Olsen with it for the Vikings. Olsen off the screen from Dykstra, a three from the top. It's way short. It'll be Falcon basketball. Olsen with a little heat check right there and uh, you won't see her take another one of those for a while. Beeren. Hoff with it now. Going inside to Natalie Hoff. In the paint, walling on her on defense. A very long two is down for Ashley Alter. 2-0 Falcons. Alter, who went over 1,000 career points in her career, 25th Seattle Pacific player to do so earlier this season. In the lane, Avery Dykstra the miss. And the ball will go out of bounds. No, it's a, it's a foul, foul on Katrina Jamaica. First foul of the game. First foul on Jamaica. Falcons 2-0. 9.05 left here first quarter. Alter to Hoff. Alter gets it back. Left side of the lane. The fall away jumper. Too strong. Rebound to Katrina Jamaica. Jamaica. Full court pass. Dykstra running the floor. Left hand layup. Tremendous defensive to offensive transition there for Western Washington, beating the Falcons back down floor. All nodded at two early on. Hoff thought about the three. Alter with it now. Beeren picks up the dribble. Hoff. Alter. Eddie, an air ball, and that hits, wow, they say off of Western Washington. Yeah, I think that's a pretty good call by the official. I'm not so sure that it wasn't Biron who was able to knock it off a Western player. So you take a look at the last bucket by Avery Dykstra. Great passing by the Vikings. Two to shoot on the shot clock. They do not notice Ashley Alter does not get a shot off. It'll be Viking basketball. Boy, oh boy, how many times have we seen that in this year's championship? I think uh, two or three times at least where teams are just unfamiliar with uh, where the clock is and how little time they have to get a shot away. Brooke Walling from the right elbow finds Riley Dykstra slashing in the lane. Shot will not go. Seattle Pacific on the run. Beeren, right-hand dribble. Now between the legs to Natalie Hoff. Right back to Beeren. Molly Olsen on her. Beeren off window. Short. Gets her own rebound. That shot off the front of the rim. Put back by Maya Hoff. Won't go. Well, if the Seattle Pacific Falcons can get three cracks at the hoop each time down floor, that's going to be a confidence boost for sure. Brooke Walling one dribble straight up. Somehow rolls off the rim. We're still tied at two. 7-15 left first quarter. Ashley Alter with it to Natalie Hoff. Maya Hoff to her sister. 
Working on Walling, that shot doesn't go, and now we have a foul on Western Washington. Non-shooting foul, but here is the pass inside to Natalie Hoff coming off her career best 21 point performance yesterday in the win against Alaska Anchorage. Jamaica and Olsen to the bench for Western Washington. Steph Peterson into the game for the Vikings along with Truett Riley. And it is a shooting foul. A little surprised on that. Maya Hoff, 6'2", out of Beaverton, Oregon. Officials, by the way, Sidney Mott, Allegra Butler, and Aaron Haugen. Exactly three minutes gone by here in the first quarter, four 10-minute quarters in women's college basketball. Great rotation, but short. One-point lead for the Falcons. Both teams playing man to begin the contest at least. Riley Dykstra, what a move in the lane for two Vikings. Great slashing drive against the Seattle Pacific defense. Ashley Alter drives the right side of the lane. Shot will not go. I and Riley grabs the rebound. Yeah, I think somebody got a piece of that. I think uh, Brooke Walling got a piece of that for the Vikings. Nice touch pass right to Walling. Truett Riley with the touch pass. 6-3 Vikings. And that was a very great job by the Vikings of working the basketball, getting a great open shot. Good defense by the Vikings. Right, Avery Dykstra messing with the pass, the entry pass for the Falcons. They do recover and get it back. Nine to shoot. Hoff in the lane. Off rim. Rebound to Truett Riley. She's been active in a short amount of time. I don't think this is the pace that Seattle Pacific wants right now. A chant of defense from the home crowd. Peterson for three off the right side of the rim, and it'll be Falcon basketball, 536 left. Vikings are looking to go inside out for their shots, and I think that's smart. There's the dump down pass. Just a high-low action for the Vikings, and they get the easy bucket. Hoff, top of the key to Beeren. Right back to Hoff, this time closer to the baseline. Natalie, the jumper from the right elbow, short. Falcons having a hard time finding baskets. They are one of 10. Brooke Walling underneath the hoop, outside. Wide open, a three on the way. Missed by Avery Dykstra. And we have a foul on Western Washington. Avery had a good look there at the three-pointer. She had an open again. The pass went into the interior. They kick it out to her. She was wide open, but she wasn't able to convert. Maddie Grandboys and Carly Zaragoza in for Western Washington. Truitt. I think you mentioned that, but Truett was the person who committed the foul. Truett Riley picked up her first foul. She checked out along with Avery Dykstra. Barry into the game for SPU. A strong baseline drive. That rolls off the rim. Basketball in the hands of Brooke Walling. She passes ahead to Grandboys. Grandboys to Zaragoza, and quickly Zaragoza is fouled by Barry. The intensity of this game has picked up. It didn't start off slow, but it has picked up here from the seven minute mark to right now. 4.35 left, first quarter, timeout on the floor. Western Washington 6, Seattle Pacific 3. Back after this on GNAC.TV.
here in Bellingham, Washington, as you take a look at the drive by Riley Dykstra. 6-3 the count. Over halfway through quarter number one, Vikings by three. Sean Wally, Robert Lowry. And there is the Seattle Pacific faithful watching their Falcons here tonight. Real good crowd, obviously mostly for the Vikings, but Seattle Pacific not too far away. They've got a lot of fans behind their bench as well. Ball out of bounds. That'll be a turnover back to the Falcons. When we have a moment, I do want to talk about all the Western and the Seattle Pacific, all academic players this year. Really, this is a very great group of girls for both teams. Barron down low to Barry. Barry, what a shot. Oh. Nearly not even looking at the hoop. Six five. Western Washington by a point. Grand Boyce to Zaragoza. Down low. Truett Riley had position. Couldn't finish. Well, the Falcons are trying to front in the post, and that time the Vikings swung the ball to the left, back to the middle, and got a good open look on the pass down floor, just not able to convert. SPU can take the lead. Barry. Shot won't go. Offensive rebound, put back short, and a late whistle. Ashley Alter the miss, and she will be heading to the free throw line. That foul on Riley Dykstra, her first. You think this game is a little bit physical out there? You got bodies banging around. Three fouls on the Vikings, one on SPU. Truett, Riley, and Riley Dykstra to the bench for Western Washington. Vikings with eight all academic performers, including four who were named to the COSIDA, which is the College Sports Information Directors of America All-District Team, those being Avery Dykstra, Carly Zaragoza, Brooke Walling, and Maddie Granboys. Speaking of Grand Boyce, she has the basketball. Now Brooke Walling. Cross court, Peterson down low, Zaragoza has it stripped away. Battle for the basketball. Jump ball called, possession arrow to the Falcons. In terms of the Falcons, they also have a number of all academic performers. Hunter Beeren, Skylar Berry. Chalina Carlisle, Anna Eddy, who we've seen, Maya Hoff, Natalie Hoff, a Cosida Academic All-District team member as well, Haley Marlowe, and Lola Weatherspoon. So congratulations to all of those players for getting it done on the court and getting it done with the books as well. 7-6, Falcons have taken the lead. Barry in the lane, banging on Brooke Walling, and Walling called for a foul. Carmen Dolfo doesn't like the call, neither does this crowd. Well, let's take a look and see who's right. Not a ton of contact, I will have to admit on that, but maybe a little bit on the arm. And again, you hit the arm, you're going to get a foul called almost uh, every time. Barry hits the first free throw, the 6'3 sophomore out of Portland, Oregon. I think she's going to be a good one before her Seattle Pacific career concludes. Four points on the evening for Barry. A three-point lead for Seattle Pacific. And again, you've got to think that this game means more to Seattle Pacific than to Western because Western is going to the West Regionals regardless. <laughs> Blocking foul. on Anna Eddy. Western will inbound, that's Molly Olsen baseline. Olsen to Zaragoza, the jumper from the left elbow. Back come the Falcons, they're up three with the basketball. Western Washington, 12th ranked nationally coming into the tournament. Offensive foul on Seattle Pacific. That will be on Weatherspoon. 
You know, Lolo setting an illegal screen of some variety, I believe, is what it is. Picks up her first personal foul. Turnover department, and you can see it right here. Yeah, Weatherspoon Tried trying to, to run, block. Run through Zaragoza. Avery back in the ball game for Western Washington, and she can't keep her footing and travels. Neither team, we've said this a lot in this tournament, shooting well. No. 15% for Seattle Pacific, 27 for Western Washington. Three turnovers each way now, Seattle Pacific and Western. Mike Simonson looks on as his team has the ball, but not anymore. Molly Olson steals it away. Left-hand dribble into the lane. Can't get the shot, no foul called. Rebound to Barry and the Falcons. Seattle Pacific with this three-point lead, but this has been a very low-scoring first quarter. Weatherspoon, nice turnaround in the lane, off iron. Riley, the rebound, ahead to Molly Olson. Avery Dykstra. Again, Barry fronting aggressively in the post for Seattle Pacific. Mason Oberg missed the three. Would have tied the ball game for the Vikings. 1.15 left first quarter. 9-6 Falcons in this GNAC championship semifinal game. Marlowe off the screen. Down low, Barry working on walling under the basket. She tried the up and under as she made it earlier. That time she came up a little bit shy. Walling kicks it out. Riley for three. Off the right side of the rim. Hunter Barron the other way. Final 45 seconds of the quarter. Barron shot is up. Bounces twice on the rim and out of bounds. Last touched by the Vikings. Both teams seem quite tense to me in terms of their shooting. And again, maybe that's the uh, magnitude of the game being played out. But neither team seems to be shooting the ball with a lot of confidence in my mind at this point. Vikings averaging 75 per game. They have six points after nearly the entire first quarter. They're lucky they're only down three. Yeah. Well, neither team. Well, you are going to get double digits there. 11-6 as Beeren hits the floater. Monique Fierke in the game for Western Washington. Riley Dykstra. Molly Olson. The short jumper rattles out. And a rebounding foul going to be called against the Vikings too. That foul on Truett Riley, that is two on Riley and two on Jamaica. Well, again, this is a Western team, though, that y y you've already alluded to and we've already seen the depth that they have with the foul situation, some of those second unit, and I say second unit advisedly because of the quality of the players coming off the bench, but some of those second unit performers may have to log some additional minutes here tonight. Natalie Hoff missed the first free throw. Second is good, 12-6. Falcons doubling up Western Washington as we near the end of quarter number one. Molly Olson looking for the final shot for the Vikings. Spins in the lane off window, no, but a foul is called with three seconds left. Well, it's going to send the Vikings to the free throw line for couple of shots here as you can see here's the spin dribble and the foul on the shot and the foul is called against Kylie Young for Seattle Pacific no check me on that under Beeren Molly gets on the board her first point Three seconds left, Seattle Pacific. You can get a shot in three, but you have to have a play. Here's the inbounds and dribbling it and throwing at the length of the court there was Marlowe. I tell you, the pretty, pretty decent arm there. Seahawks taking a look. Hey, who knows who their quarterback will be next yeah, season. That exactly. was 
A strong throw indeed after 10 minutes of play. SPU 12, Western Washington 8. Back after this with quarter number two on GNAC.TV. At Seattle Pacific, everything is rooted in faith. My classes give me faith that I'll achieve all my dreams. My community gives me faith that I'll make a positive impact. Growing in school in Seattle has given me faith in finding opportunities to grow. I have faith that I can actually afford a great education. Central is a great place to learn to make yourself better. I was worried coming here as a transfer student and as a first-gen student that I would feel a little alone or a little nervous to make friends, but the physics department has been incredible. They've all been so welcoming. And they're providing me with the tools and the knowledge I need to improve myself after the education part is done. So when it comes to getting professionally certified, Central prepares us directly for that. A good look at the cheerleaders, cheer squad here at Western Washington University. Recently won a national award for their game day cheer. Doing good things here at Carver Gym. And you're kind of a cheer aficionado. You know more than the average bear about the sport. Well, that's what happens when there's some females in the house that do both competitive cheer and school cheer. Wow. Lots of cheer. Yep. Traveling called on Western Washington, not how they wanted to start the second quarter. Just eight points in quarter number one for the Vikings. 9.43 and counting second quarter, 12-8. SPU in the lead. Right now, what are we on, about a 48-point night for one of these teams? A lot of sliding there on Alter's foot, but... No travel called, shot missed. Back come the Vikings running the floor. Zara Goza stops and nearly throws it away. She was in the air and had to make up her mind, shoot or pass. I know both teams want to transition if they can, but right now there seems to be a sense of almost desperation out there. You'd like to see somebody take a little better charge of moving the ball up and down the floor and getting each team into their respective sets. Dykstra looking for Brooke Wallen gets knocked down. No foul called. Falcons, 9-10 left in the second quarter. Hoff down low. Molly Olsen on defense. That basketball hit the top of the backboard, which will turn it over to Western Washington. I forget what game I saw not too long ago where it went up there and stuck. At the top? Yeah, wow. they got stuck up there by the basket and the, uh, by the top of the basket and the scoreboard. That caused us. Uh, that caused a few minute delay. Did you use your Cape Crusader skills no, gosh, to go get no. it? No, fortunately it was on TV. I wasn't called into action this time. 12-8 Falcons over the number two team in the West Region, Western Washington Vikings. Good passing. Three out of the corner is missed by Grand Boyce. Offensive rebound to Riley. She'll find a slashing Molly Olsen battling for the basketball, and a foul is called on the Falcons. Western did a real nice job there on the long rebound. They boxed Seattle Pacific in the paint and allowed their teammates to get the, the long rebound off the missed shot. You can see it right there. And there's the foul in the lane that takes the Vikings and Olsen to the free throw line. Molly Olsen hit the first. The senior out of Napa Vine, Washington. She's just been a solid performer throughout her Western Washington career. It's a, sh a shame she missed a good chunk of last season yeah. because of that Left knee you see with the wrap and brace on it. Well, I don't see any uh, hindrance. She's, she's moving freely out there and playing well. Two-point ball game. Hoff. Shot up and missed by Alter. Rebound to Grand Boys. Vikings can tie it or take the lead. 
Molly Olsen looking for Walling. Walling under the basket, quickly double teamed. They swing it around, Riley for three. Yeah. Western Washington in front. She was just in rhythm when she got the basketball, and when you get a three-point shooter like that in rhythm, more often than not, you're gonna come away with a good result. Riley Dykstra hits 38% of her threes. I've seen her make some very big threes on this floor. Well, Vikings. that was a big one right there. Vikings by one. Molly Olson wants in on the party. It's 15-12, yeah. Western Washington. Mike Simonson made the right decision there to call the timeout. SPU wants to talk things over. 7.22 left, second quarter back after this on GNAC.TV. BU at MSU Be long in Billings. Become who you want to be. Be a yellow jacket. Located in the heart of the Willamette Valley, Western Oregon University is close to everything. Find your place. Find your people. Find your path. Find Western. Western Oregon University. Great education, sweet location. The officials right now, Sean, they are taking a look at something on the replay monitor. I'm not exactly sure what they are taking a look at, but they're sorting something out as both teams exiting their respective benches. Seattle Pacific back on the floor. There's a good look at the Western Washington University bench and right there in the midst of it, Carmen Dolfo. There was not a three-point shot involved. Unless they're checking who the foul was on. Shooting not improving for Seattle Pacific. They are at 14.3% right yeah, now. Yeah, three, three of 21. They have no and points here in this second quarter. But interestingly, last night they needed to shoot lights out to come away with a four-point victory. Tonight they couldn't shoot the basketball any worse, and they're only down by three. Basketball is a funny game. When you think you know it all, yeah. you shoot 14%. Complete opposite it, of last night. It, it couldn't be any more a polar opposite of what we saw last night. Two officials discussing amongst themselves. One official at the scorer's table. Well, this is giving Seattle Pacific a little additional rest, which may not be the worst thing on the night. They're double checking on a foul is what it is. Jamaica has two. Mm -hmm. We knew that. So I don't, I'm not sure what the confusion was. So Carly Zaragoza checking in. I don't think, uh, well, I don't know why that would be an issue right now because Jamaica was not even in the contest. Fifteen twelve, Western Washington as we try to get back to action here. Hoff. You know, it was kind of overlooked a little bit last night, but Maya Hoff actually had six assists in that game. They could use a few right now yeah, as exactly. Seattle Pacific has not scored in the quarter. Nearly three minutes gone by. Good press by Western Washington. Falcons just do get across half court. Well, the best assist player in the game can't do anything if the player they pass to can't make a shot. Very good point. 
Hoff double teamed and fouled. That will be on Carly Zaragoza. That is her first. There's the entry pass, and you can see on the spin and the foul as a help came in from the outside as well. That foul could have probably gone on either Viking. Foul on the reach-in. The reach-in, more times than not, is going to get the yeah. foul called on you unless somehow you come away with all ball. It's highly visible. That's the reason. The officials can see the hand on another hand. Grand boys down low to Zaragoza, and now Zaragoza is fouled by Maya Hoff. Now she tried to ride her out a little bit out of the post position there, and that it was the foul reason for the foul, as you can see. Kind of tries to push her, actually reaches across as well, but she bumped her down low off the block as well. Dykstra inbounds to her sister. Grand boys now to Zaragoza, left elbow. One dribble. Strong in the lane off glass. Carly Zaragoza, 17-14 Vikings. Natalie Hoff did all she could defensively. Stayed in front of her, stayed strong. It was just good offense defeating good defense. It's the Hoff and Zaragoza show right now. Hoff can't make the shot. Vikings the other way. Riley Dykstra picks up the dribble. Brooke Walling. Outside, Avery is open for three. She no. hits it, but it will not count. Offensive foul on Brooke Walling. Now she has two fouls along with Jamaica having two. And Truitt, Truitt Riley with two as well. The Vikings are very fortunate that they have the significant depth because it looks like it's going to be tested here. Riley back in the game. Brooke Walling takes a seat, so they swapped a player with two fouls for a player with two fouls. 17, 14, 6, 12, and counting, second quarter. Winner of this game gets MSU Billings tomorrow at 7.30. Eddie in the lane, got Molly Olsen off her feet, falls to the court. Ball tapped out of bounds by the Falcons. Well, they don't call the hardwood the hardwood for nothing. When you fall in it, it's hard, and it's unforgiving. No give indeed. Molly Olson swings it to Riley Dykstra. Back to Molly Olson. Dykstra. Carly Zara goes to the top of the key. Nice jab step. Yeah. Jumper down. If Carly can hit that, look out. Well, that was... She sold everybody on the jab step in the entire building. 19-14, Vikings up five. Good defense by Molly Olson, anticipating that pass. The steal by Molly Olson in the lane. She's going coast to coast, but it can't finish. Truett Riley saves it. Finds Dykstra, Olson in the corner. Truett Riley underneath, and a foul is called on the Falcons. And Riley now going to step to the free throw line. You, you talked about Molly Olson defensively. Is she is she underrated defensively? There is, is the shot by Olson. Truett came up with the rebound, and then she was fouled as she went inside. So nice work. But would you concur with me that Molly Olson may be a a better defender than she gives gets credit for? Absolutely. Oddly enough. She has more blocks than steals. 17 this season, 17 blocks. Halfway through quarter number two, and there's another steal. Truett Riley ahead of the pass. Molly Olson to reward Truett Riley, and she is fouled and will go to the line. Foul called against Natalie Hoff. That's her first. What do you do if you're Mike Simonson? The Falcons only have two points this quarter, zero from the field. They're 0 of 6. Well, they, they've gotten some good shots, quite frankly. They just haven't got down. And I do think that Seattle Pacific may be feeling a little bit of the lingering effects of the UAA defense, the pressure defense that they played all last night.
but the difference in the shooting is is so is so great that uh, I'm not exactly sure why Seattle Pacific is having a much tougher time getting shots tonight than they did last night. Western going to go back into a press. Western Washington on a 16 to three run in the last 5:42. 22-14, the offense starting to flow properly for the Vikings. 4.35 left in the second quarter. Barry with it for the Falcons, hands off to Beeren, and an offensive foul called on Barry, and she can't believe it. She runs right to the official to talk it out. For Skyler, that is her second personal foul. Well, you looked at the replay. What was your opinion? She got ran into. I'm not sure. It'd be nice to see what the official said to her. 4.29 left, second quarter, 22-14 Vikings. Maddie Granboy back in for Western. Molly Olson to Zaragoza. Hands off to Avery Dykstra. Dykstra to Zaragoza. The strength, the size, yeah. what a move. Well, when she gets the ball down that low, that really is, it's tough for the Falcons to do anything with her. Ashley Alter driving the right side of the lane, runs into Zaragoza, and they're calling a foul on Maddie Grambois. Once again, there's the step through move in the left hand use and the bucket on the inside for Western. Beer into inbound. Natalie Hoff now. Beer in for the Falcons. Open in the lane, doesn't take the shot, but gets a little closer, and that shot falls. 24-16 Vikings. Seattle Pacific is having to go a lot individual offense against the Vikings tonight. And again, they're still down by eight despite the poor shooting. Only down eight, I should say. Zaragoza loses it out of bounds. It'll be Falcon basketball. And that shot by Barron was Falcons' first field goal of the quarter. So they went six and a half minutes without scoring from the field. Hoff to Beeren, 3.15 left, second quarter. Beeren, another floater, that one's perfect. I tell you, she's been something tonight. Matter of fact, Beeren with six points leading the way now and four rebounds as well for SPU. Avery in the lane. Zaragoza, a jumper, this one too strong. Falcons the other way. Hoff hit the deck. She's popped right back up. Well, I think beeren has got the hot hand right now. You might want to get it back in to her as they do. They're listening to you, Robert? Yeah. Hoff from 16. Good. 24-20. Hoff with five on the game. That was a shot right in rhythm for Hoff, and you knew that was going down. Avery cross court to her sister Riley. Riley baseline and a foul is called on the Falcons. I think it's going to go against Weatherspoon if I'm, if I'm correct. And for Lolo, she becomes the second Falcon with two personal fouls. Just a look at Hoff's last jumper. Close, low scoring contest in this GNAC championship semifinal. If you're a if you're a high school basketball player and you happen to be watching this tonight, watch Natalie Hoff. She has a great mid-range game, and I think that's something that is overlooked uh, today more than it should be. You can hit those 12 to 14 footers. You can do a lot of good for your team. Ball going to be stolen by Western Washington. No, it's not because it's still loose and now picked up by Beeren. Anna Eddy misses the three. Offensive rebound to Alter. 
Eddie is floating a little bit on her outside shots, not really setting her feet. Weatherspoon, right side of the lane, driving on Dykstra. Shot too strong, but the putback is missed by Alter. She is fouled and will head to the free throw line. Boy, I can't tell you how close that was to a three-point play that opportunity. Is the third foul on Truett Riley, and she will check out Carly Zaragoza right back into the ball game. I think Riley got surprised a little bit by Alter swooping in from the weak side to, to try to uh, rebound that shot. Nobody blocked her out, and I think she got. Uh, Truett Riley by surprise. Six points for Alter as she hits both free throws. 141 left. If you'd have told me, if you'd have said, if we were just sitting around having a having a Coke and you said to me, Seattle Pacific is going to be within three with 141 left in the half and they've shot three of 17 from the field, I wouldn't have believed it. Ripley's believe it or not. Steph Peterson the drive with the left hand. It won't go. Back come Beeren and the Falcons. They can tie it potentially. Looking for Hoff in the lane. She's got a size advantage. Nice strip by Maddie Grandboys. Ball out of bounds. Falcon ball. I'll tell you, players from both teams have been hitting the deck on just about every possession, including Hoff here as she spins. Ball knocked away, and down she goes. Weatherspoon guarded by Riley Dykstra. Picks up her dribble. Beeren now. Nine to shoot in the lane. The floater. Beeren can hit the floater from most places on the court. One minute left in the half. And look at the score. It's a one-point game. It's got to be a victory for Seattle Pacific at this point when they're shooting just 24%. Again, that's 17% shooting first quarter, 33%, so not a ton better in the second quarter, but... 24% from the field and yet down by one. Western Washington not doing themselves any favors. One of their last five as Avery Dykstra hits the free throw. Well, yeah, they're having a little bit of a tough night too. Eight of 26 from the field. Avery rattles the second free throw home. Three point lead for Western Washington. 50 seconds left and a full court trap in the corner. But the Falcons break it. Alter has it, left hand dribble, switches to the right, spins in the lane, rejection by Carly Zaragoza. That was a big block right there and gives the Vikings an opportunity to try to score in transition. Peterson outside, wide open it. Riley Dykstra can't hit the three. Crowd would have loved that one to go. Shot clock off, so Seattle Pacific can hold for the final shot if they want to. Mike Simonson must mean business. He's taking the sweater off. <laughs> Seven seconds left. Beeren, another floater. That one's not even close. Three seconds and a heave. Riley Dykstra had more time. I don't think she realized it. Wow. That Half was time. 20 minutes of intense basketball. Fast paced. Furious action here inside Carver Gym. And we are 20 minutes away from seeing who will play in the GNAC finals tomorrow against MSUB. Vikings 27, Falcons 24. We've reached halftime in Bellingham. Come on back in about 12 minutes on GNAC.TV. Located in the heart of the Willamette Valley, Western Oregon University is close to everything. Find your place. Find your people. Find your path. Find Western. Western Oregon University. Great education, sweet location. Welcome to NNU. For over 100 years, we've had one goal. Make the world a better place. It's all happening here, the Boise Valley, and we're smack in the middle of it. Challenging programs, we've got a hundred of them. 
What is an average class size of 17 sound? Professors who actually care? We're talking a 15 to one ratio. Trust us, they care. We're NNU, here for you, here for good.
Back here, finishing up halftime inside Carver Gym on the campus of Western Washington University. The Western Washington Vikings out shooting, getting ready for the second half. Seattle Pacific still in the locker room as the Vikings lead 27-24. Well, here are some of the first half statistics from today's contest. You can see the field goal shooting there. Neither coach is going to say, neither coach is going to put this game into the archives and say this is one we want to show our players in the, in the future. You can see Seattle Pacific still has not scored from three-point range. Free throw line, both teams shooting well, but other than that, uh, field goal shooting not solid at all. In terms of individual scoring, Hunter Buren with eight points leading the way for Seattle Pacific. Ashley Alter, six, five for Natalie Hoff, and Maya Hoff has one point. Also, Skylar Berry off the bench with four for the Western Washington Vikings. Pretty decent balance. Riley Dykstra with six. Molly Olson with a six. Also Carly Zaragoza with six. Avery Dykstra with four. Three points for Truett Riley, though she has some pretty significant foul difficulty with three fouls in the first half and two for Brooke Walling. So Walling really has been uh, a non-factor for Western Washington to this point. I think this is a very smart move by Carmen Dolfo and the Vikings. What are you not doing well? You're not shooting well. Neither team is. So what is she having her team do for four minutes? Shoot the basketball. Well, and again, this isn't a typical kind of free-for-all shoot-around that you see. This is, this is very disciplined. She's having players take shots in rhythm. You're getting the pass on the baseline, squaring up. These are game shots that she's having in practice. This isn't just regular, any old shots to get warm for the second half. We'll have to see how it works shooting-wise for both teams because the Vikings came out, practiced, tried to get the rust and dust off, whereas SPU just came out of the locker room and they do not look like they're going to grab a basketball with just a minute 15 well, left in halftime. There's two different coaching philosophies. One coach has his players out shooting, 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 the other one says, we couldn't shoot any worse, so let's not practice and see what happens instead. We'll see which, we'll see which philosophy actually proves better. Very interesting here in this second half. Vikings, the number one team in the GNAC, the GNAC regular season champion, looking to be the GNAC tournament champion. They'll have to maintain this lead and defeat Seattle Pacific here tonight. Championship tomorrow for either of these teams that wins here this evening. Awaiting and watching here tonight, the MSU Billings Yellow Jackets. They had a good game against Central Washington today. It was tied at halftime, but Billings able to pull off what would end up being a 13 point victory in the second half. It was an impressive performance by Montana State Billings today. To begin the third quarter, it will be Falcon basketball. And you know, for as bad as they shot, they were consistent. 12 points in each quarter, yeah. mostly from the free throw line. Well, the, the free throw line has been good for both teams. And they each has hit 10 of 12 from the free throw line. Barron begins with the basketball here in the third quarter for the Falcons. Taha. Back to Beeren. Off the screen from Hoff. Right elbow. Hoff with it now. Right back to Beeren. Beeren was the hot hand in the first half for the Falcons, if you can call anybody a hot hand. Hoff in the lane. Five to shoot. Shot might have been deflected by Dykstra. Katrina Jamaica and her two fouls in the lane. The spin, the right-hander yeah. is good. She was under control as she came out of backcourt, but she knew what she wanted to do. She attacked, spun back in the lane, and put up a, a little soft one-hander. Her first bucket of the game. A long two on the way. Ashley Alter has eight points tonight, 29-26. Yeah, she was about only about one foot inside the three-point line, if that. Jamaica beyond the three-point line. Now dribbles inside, backing down on Hoff. 
Avery Dykstra, her three is blocked. partially blocked. Barron circles back out. Hoff to the other Hoff. Top of the key, a very high and short shot by Alter. Not only was it a high and short, it was an air ball. It didn't draw any iron at all. There's the basket a moment ago that you saw from Alter, but she tried to fire the long range one on this last position and failed. Avery Dykstra picks up the dribble to Brooke Walling. Walling going baseline. Finds Riley Dykstra, and guess what? Another step on the sideline. We have seen, this is the first time I think we've seen it on the near court, the one in front of us. But uh, this is something that has plagued teams throughout this tournament. I've seen more in this tournament than I might have seen in the last three or four years. We're oddly enough approaching double digits the amount of times yeah. people have stepped on the sideline. Two minutes gone by here in the third quarter. Nice up and under move. Got Molly Olsen up in the air. Can't convert the shot. Eddie Whoa. the miss. Back come the Vikings. Eddie did everything possible there except convert the basket. Molly Olsen, Jamaica wanted the basketball. She fires from three. That's off back rim into the hands of Alter. Nobody stopping Alter's penetration. Molly finally picks her up. Now There's the mid-range jumper I talked about by Natalie Hoff. Natalie Hoff with seven here tonight. A one-point lead for Western Washington. Well, the longer Seattle Pacific stays around, the more confidence they're going to get. Nice baseline drive and reverse by Riley Dykstra. Yep. Eight points tonight for Riley. Very athletic move, taking the baseline, going up and under and getting it off the window. Hoff dribbling with the left hand, a little bit of a forearm, no call. And they're now calling a foul on Western Washington and counting the bucket. Oh, my. Three-point opportunity from Maya Hoff. Got in the lane, spun in the paint. I, I think I would tend to concur with the Western Washington bench that while there was a foul there, it might have occurred before the shot. Jamaica now has three fouls along with Truett Riley, so their minutes will be limited. Moving forward, and we are tied at 31. And who would have thought that? Western looked like they had an opportunity to give themselves some daylight in the latter stages of the second quarter, but now we're back into the tie. Brooke Walling yeah. under the basket, 33-31. She cleared a little space for her and got the left hand up off the window on the reverse side. Just four points for Walling. She averages over 13 a game. Eddie spins into the lane. Finds Hoff going strong off the left side of the glass. We're knotted at 33. Well, Hoff shows the left-hand capability there, and now she gets back quickly on Zaragoza. Outside, Avery with it now, off the screen from Walling. She kicks it outside to Walling. Now Dykstra to Zaragoza at the free throw line. Brooke Walling out of the corner. That shot not even close. No, it hit the side of the backboard. 5.48 and counting third quarter. Hoff in the lane. Good job moving into the lane, slashing to the basket. Ashley Alter double figures now, 10 points. And Seattle Pacific has regained the lead. Brooke Walling inside is fouled by Natalie Hoff. Walling, a 65% free throw shooter, will have a couple of opportunities right here. Let's see, Alter put the Falcons back in the lead. Avery Dykstra checks out. That last bucket put Alter in double figures with 10. She becomes the first player in the game in double digits. Mason Oberg returns for Western Washington as Walling misses the free throw. We, we, we talked about the fact when you miss short, it generally indicates you're a little bit tired in the legs. She converts the second. 
One point lead for the Falcons. Walling checks out. Truett Riley returns with three fouls. Well, yeah, she has three. Jamaica has three. So a little bit of foul difficulty for the Vikings because, again, we've still got a half of this quarter and a full fourth quarter to play. Both teams shooting much better here in the third quarter. And Zaragoza with the steal, the save to Molly Olsen. What a play by Carly. Zaragoza doing a great job to overplay on the defensive end. Molly Olsen doesn't get a foul called. Left-hand side of the lane, shot won't go. Back come the Falcons up one. Eddie working on Olsen, out to Natalie Hoff for three, rims out. Ball loose on the floor, Alter has it. Beeren inside, Maya Hoff. Truett Riley, nothing she can do but get the rebound. Yeah, Hoff that time. I, I think the ball looked like it almost slid off her hand a little bit. I don't think she shot that with uh, what she wanted to do. Zaragoza loses the basketball, goes right to Riley Dykstra. Dykstra spins, and traveling is called on Riley Dykstra. 4.28 wow. left in the third quarter. Falcons up by one. Back after this on GNAC.TV. Back here in Bellingham, look at Brooke Walling, the reverse underneath the basket. And then Hoff in the lane, the nice drive. We got a tight contest, SPU 35, Western Washington 34, Sean Wally, Robert Lowry, our fourth game of the day for everybody here at GNAC TV. Seattle Pacific up one with the basketball. Weatherspoon off wow. the glass, strong with the right hand. Yeah, she cleared herself enough space and went high off the window. Molly Olsen off the screen from Truett Riley. And a foul on Seattle Pacific away from the basketball. That'll be on Weatherspoon. Yeah, a little wrestling match is what it came down to in the, in the paint. And you can see it. Well, here is the move by Weatherspoon on the play before. Olsen to inbound. Brooke Walling with it. Oberg, a high arcing three. Mason Oberg, the triple. Her first points of the game were tied at 37. Now Oberg... Seventh in the league and made three pointers this year, so that should be as no surprise. Travel. Weatherspoon falls down. Hope she's all right. Well, she twisted that right ankle, I believe, going in the lane. Here is the three just a moment ago. And that, that was pure. rain, snow, yeah. rainbow. Weatherspoon checks out and walks off under her own power. Yeah, she looked like she was slid a little bit and might have might have twisted that right ankle just a bit. Molly Olson to Riley. Looking down low for Truett Riley. Turnover to the Falcons. They can take the lead back. Well, partner, I think we got another one that's going to go down to the, to the final moments. 
That would be a good thing. And look at that move by Hunter Barron, 39-37 Falcons. Barron has really been a star tonight for Seattle Pacific. Ten points for her now. She was impressive last night. Tonight, ten points. Ten points tonight. Six rebounds. Alter, ten points, five rebounds. Barron, five of nine from the field tonight. And really, it's been the outside play for Seattle Pacific this evening. Jamaica back in for the Vikings. Truett Riley to the bench. So Carmen Dolfo swapping out players with three fouls. Molly Olsen, left side of the lane, shot short. Ball loose on the floor. Jamaica has it, as does Barron, and a jump ball called. Possession arrow to the Vikings. I don't know if you noticed that, but Molly Olsen did a great look off. She gave a little glance to her right and then went quickly to her left. That was a real heady play by Molly Olson. The senior out of Napa Vine, Washington. You know, she's got friends and family in this crowd. Mason Oberg, the head fake. Dribbles in the corner. Brooke Walling throws it right to you, Robert. Close. I was ready for it. But I was going to be stepping on the sideline, so I would have been uh, turnover me as well. The 10th turnover for Western Washington. 14 for Seattle Pacific tonight. Or actually seven, I should say, seven turnovers. Two-point lead for the Falcons and a foul on Riley Dykstra. Western Washington scoreless in the last minute 34. Dykstra's second personal foul. Hoff has it for the Falcons. They lead by two. And a foul called again on Western Washington. This one on Brooke Walling, and that'll be her third. Skyler Berry was the player who was fouled trying to get position on the inside. Well, they give you five. You want to use four. Brooke Walling to the bench for Western Washington. But I don't think you want to use three fouls quite this early. Ashley Alter. Hoff with it now, going baseline. Under the basket, the reverse. What a move by Maya Hoff. Yeah, Maya Hoff doing a nice job to get loose underneath and make sure to get the reverse in. Oberg, no foul called. She hits the deck. Hard. Pops right back up. She has the basketball back. What a spin in the lane. Shot blocked. She goes down again. Ball out of bounds. Last touched by Seattle Pacific. That very nearly was a carry on the spin. It was a quick spin, but watch it right here. Well, you saw it, and then there was the shot blocked and the foul called. Dykstra to Katrina Jamaica. So and we got a little bit of a wrestling match going on in the lane. Hunter Beeren hit with her third foul. Now she has three along with Maya Hoff. This may end up being a little bit of a game of attrition in the fourth quarter. We may see some players we didn't expect to see play in this contest at this rate. Beer into the bench. Haley Marlowe back in for the Falcons. 41-37, Falcons lead by four. Can the Vikings answer? And, and there's an end line violation. Another player stepping on the out of bounds marker. Dykstra probably looking for the foul, didn't get that call, and steps on the baseline. Minute 35 left in the third quarter. I would encourage now, if I was either coach, for my players not to play it quite so close to the line. Hoff, guarded by Jamaica. Shot won't go, ball poked out, tracked down by Avery Dykstra. Vikings 
only 10 points in this quarter after 19 in the second quarter. And traveling is called by Katrina Jamaica out of frustration. She throws the ball backwards. Got to be careful with that. Uh, you don't want to compound an error, whether you believe it or not. And I do think she actually did drag the pivot foot. But you want to compound that with a potential technical. Seattle Pacific, the floater by Alter, rims out. How did that not fall through? Oberg the other way, final minute of the third quarter. Oberg, a floater to Avery Dykstra. Her three is good. 41-40, Falcons. Ashley Alter to Hoff, it's poked away. Hoff retrieves it. Hoff just runs through and is called for traveling. Maddie Grandboys got ran over, no call there, but the turnover by Hoff. So Western Washington, and here is the Western basket just a moment ago, the three-pointer on the great dish out on the, uh, from the baseline drive. But Western Washington, there's a seven-second difference between the shot and the game clock. So Western can take this down pretty far if they want to. Or if you want to go quick two for one, I don't, I don't see that happening in this position though. Vikings trying to take the lead back. Final 30 seconds of the third quarter. Molly Olsen directing traffic for the Vikings. Olsen closely guarded by Marlowe. And another out of bounds step. Wow. All Robert can do is shake his head. I, I've never seen so many in a concentrated amount of time. SPU can go to the fourth quarter with the lead. Right now it's one, it could be more. They want three more, they will not get it though. But they get the offensive rebound, three seconds left. Hoff is fouled with 2.4. I was a little surprised how quick the three-point shot was taken with that much time on the clock. But Hoff doing a nice job to come up with the rebound, and now she has the opportunity to add from the free throw line. 2.4 left. That is enough time to get a credible shot for Western. Two-point lead for the Falcons as Natalie Hoff hits the free throw. She has eight points. Now nine, three-point lead for Seattle Pacific. Molly Olsen from half court, the heave just short. After three quarters of play, SPU looking for the upset. They lead it 43-40. Come on back for the final 10 minutes after this on GNAC.TV. At Seattle Pacific, everything is rooted in faith. My classes give me faith that I'll achieve all my dreams. My community gives me faith that I'll make a positive impact. Growing in school in Seattle has given me faith in finding opportunities to grow. I have faith that I can actually afford a great education. Central is a great place to learn to make yourself better. I was worried coming here as a transfer student and as a first-gen student that I would feel a little alone or a little nervous to make friends, but the physics department has been incredible. They've all been so welcoming. And they're providing me with the tools and the knowledge I need to improve myself after the education part is done. So when it comes to getting professionally certified, Central prepares us directly for that. Sean Wally with Robert Lowry here inside Carver Gym. What a great look at this beautiful building yeah. here at Western Washington University. Seattle Pacific finally found a way to get some shots going in that third quarter. They hit on eight of 16 shots, 50% there. Western wasn't bad at five of 11 at 46%, but for the night now, after starting at a 17% clip back in the first quarter, Seattle Pacific is up to 32%. Western Washington hitting at 34%. So again, shooting has not been uh, the forte of either of these squads tonight. Both teams have scored 19 in a quarter. Seattle Pacific just did that in the third. Little push off there from Weatherspoon yeah. on Jamaica. No whistle. 
Bucket counts, 45-40, SPU up five. That's gonna be the easiest shot Weatherspoon gets tonight. Katrina Jamaica. Outside, Avery Dykstra drives the lane. What a move with the right hand. Strong in the paint. Yeah, she swooped in there and went in strong, went all the way across and laid it up on the far side of the hoop from where she'd started. Hoff hands off to Alter. Beeren, three-point lead for the Falcons and the basketball. You mentioned it before the game started. In our open, yeah. Seattle Pacific has not beaten Western Washington in a very long time. Yeah, matter of fact, the last time they beat Western was back on the 17th of November or of January of 2019 in Seattle, 61-59. Too easy inside for Ashley Alter. Nobody was guarding her. Five-point lead for Seattle Pacific. Molly Olson, Riley Dykstra with it now. Left hand dribble in the lane, spins back right. Nowhere to go. Brooke Walling underneath. She is fouled, count the bucket. That was as good a move as Walling has had tonight as she got the ball down low, powered up right through the foul by Hoff and she'll now try to get the three-point play. Three fouls now on Hoff, Beeren, and Weatherspoon. Multiple players with three fouls on both teams. Brooke Walling, the lefty, converts the three-point play. Eight points tonight for Walling, 47-45, Falcons by two. Hoff, top of the key. To Beeren. Weatherspoon guarded by Walling. Drives the left side. Stops. Pivots back middle. What a shot by Lolo Weatherspoon. She's had a couple of big ones here in this second half. None any bigger than that one, however. Avery Dykstra, left hand dribble. Outside, it's Molly Olson. Olson driving in the lane, has it swiped away. The steal by Weatherspoon. Bounce pass to Alter. Shot won't go, walling the rebounds. Missed opportunity there by Seattle Pacific. Yeah, no question about it. Already up four. Jamaica down low, double teamed and fouled. Wow. That might be on Hoff. No, they give it to Weatherspoon, but that's still four. Weatherspoon the first player with four fouls in this game. Well, I think if you ask Mike Simonson, who would you rather have have four fouls, Lola Weatherspoon or Natalie Hoff? I think he'd probably have to say Weatherspoon, though she has played very well here tonight. Weatherspoon and Natalie Hoff to the bench. Maya Hoff returns and Skylar Berry. Ashley Alter also gets a breather. Jamaica has a real nice uh, free throw stroke. Three point lead for the Falcons. Make it two. Jamaica from the free throw line this year, 74%. And you can see why there she shoots it with a lot of confidence. Mason Oberg back in the game for Western Washington. The sharpshooter extraordinaire from three. They drop into a 2-3 zone to the Vikings. Way to change it up on Seattle Pacific. See if what they do with it. Nice slash in the lane, but the shot's rejected by Walling. Well, you can't go up into a shot blocker. That's what Hoff did that time, and Walling made her pay for it. You gotta use your body to fend off the shot blocker. Western for the tie. This place erupts. Katrina Jamaica ties the game at 49. She has six points tonight. Yeah, Mike Simonson gonna call a timeout. I expected that. 6.57 left to decide who plays in the championship game tomorrow. Will it be the Vikings 
for the Falcons. We're knotted at 49. Back after this on GNAC.TV. Be you at MSUB. Be long in Billings. Become who you want to be. Be a Yellow Jacket. Located in the heart of the Willamette Valley, Western Oregon University is close to everything. Find your place. Find your people. Find your path. Find Western. Western Oregon University. Great education, sweet location. Back here in Bellingham, and you take a look at the block by Brooke Walling on the shot by Hoff that allowed Western Washington to tie the ball game right there on Jamaica's jumper. 49 apiece, 6.57 left. Sean Wally, Robert Lowry, and a whole lot of fans inside Carver Gym. Yeah, no, this is a great house here tonight. Hoff from the left block, Katrina Jamaica guarding her. Outside, Beeren. Beeren picks up the dribble. Seven to shoot. Eddie, nowhere to go. Three to shoot. Two to shoot. Drive shot short by Marlowe. Vikings can take the lead. This place will go bonkers. Walling to Oberg. Six, 17 left. Katrina Jamaica, eyeballing the three, finds Avery. Avery, the step through right side of the lane, shot too strong. Hunter Beeren the other way. SPU can take the lead back, six minutes remaining to decide who goes to the championship final tomorrow night. And the Vikings staying in that 2-3 zone. Good rebound by Barry off the miss from Eddie. Barry down low, throws it over her head. No foul called, back come the Vikings. Katrina Jamaica's open, they get it to her. A little late, but a foul called, sending Jamaica to the line to put the Vikings potentially in the lead. Yeah, Barry down floor didn't get a real good shot. Western, there's the run out, pass down to Jamaica. To their credit, the Falcons get back, but Barry then fouls and sends the Vikings to the free throw line to try to regain the lead. Jamaica, who hit two from the free throw line just a moment ago. Molly Olson going to return. Avery Dykstra takes a seat. Jamaica off the right side of the rim. We are still tied. No reason to rush at the free throw line. Jamaica short on the second, and we remain tied. The deeper this goes, the more it favors Seattle Pacific. Go down low. It's Barry. Look at the cutter in the lane, giving Seattle Pacific the lead back is Ashley Alter, 51-49 Falcons. Well, you got to credit Barry with that basket right there. She made a brilliant dish. Molly Olsen directing the offense for Western Washington. Oberg open for three. <laughs> Nearly the same spot that she hit earlier. Vikings by one. Big shot by Oberg. She shot that, and as soon as it left her hands, I think she knew that it was going down. 4.40 remaining, another three in the corner. Missed by Eddie, and the ball stolen away by the freshman Oberg. Off to the races, the stop in the lane. Ooh, good defense rejected by Eddie. SPU the other way. Beeren, the stop, 
hesitation and SPU back in the lead. Well, she didn't want to get the shot blocked. That's why she gave that little hesitation before she went off the glass. That was a heady play. Because otherwise that was going to get blocked big time. Time ticking away. 4.08 and counting. One point lead for the Falcons. Molly Olsen looking for Brooke Walling. Ball knocked away out of bounds by the Falcons. We had Barry who is playing overplaying in the post, and that's pretty that's a pretty tough pass to make from the perimeter. 402 left. Come on back. SPU leads by one on GNAC.tv. There is a dish by Barry to alter, a cutting alter. And then the three drops down by Oberg from the outside. A couple of big buckets in the last minute or so in this 53-52 Seattle Pacific University lead. Last night's Falcon ball game came down to the final minute against UAA. Can Mike Simonson and his crew do it again? Western Washington looking for the lead, but no, what a job. Stealing the ball is Maya Hoff and saving it inbounds. Yeah, that was a tremendous defensive play by Hoff. Barron picks up the dribble, hands to Eddie. Hoff at the top. Barron, right side of the lane, the spin back center. Can't get it to go, Truett Riley the rebound. Boy, that went in and out out a heartbreaking shot for the Falcons Mason Oberg fake the three Peterson in now for Western Washington Truett Riley 320 left to decide who plays in the championship tomorrow eight to shoot looking for Walling that's knocked out of bounds it'll be Viking ball but it's only seven on the shot clock remember time management Carmen Dolfo making sure to yell out at her team to be aware of the clock. Avery Dykstra with five on the clock. Loses the ball for a second. And she has called for too many steps. Sixteen turnovers for Western Washington. Uncharacteristic. Just nine for Seattle Pacific. Remember yesterday they had 14 in the first half against UAA, but they cut it down to only five in the second half of that contest. And, and were that not the case, I don't think they would have been victorious. Falcons by one with the ball. Three minutes left to decide who punches their ticket to the championship game tomorrow here in the GNAC. Beeren, 15 on the shot clock. Beeren off the screen. Hoff. Back to Beeren. Beeren into the lane, left side. Layup too strong. Brooke Walling the rebound. Vikings can take the lead back. Oberg, how is there not a foul and a late whistle? No, because it was a foul. <laughs> Just wasn't one called yeah. in a timely fashion. And there is the foul from behind called against, I believe, Beeren. Yeah, it's her fourth. So Weatherspoon and Beeren each with four fouls for Seattle Pacific. Dykstra to inbound. She gets it to her sister, Riley. Mason Oberg, the freshman, off the screen from Walling, picks up the dribble. I thought Oberg was going to shoot that one. I really did. 
Avery Dykstra strong in the lane, can't get it to go. Walling saves the day. Out to Oberg, the three on the way. Mason Oberg, all she does is hit threes. Yeah. Well, she was thinking hard about the first shot that she passed up. She decided not to follow suit and go ahead and cast on the second. And with that, the Vikings have the lead and two minutes left. Inside two minutes. Can the Falcons answer whether the Vikings storm? Ball just ripped away from Hoff. Walling has it to Oberg. Vikings by two. Big, big possession in this contest. It can be a two possession game with a bucket here. Or the Falcons with a stop. Just down two, 90 seconds left. Oberg off the screen. Three to shoot. Brooke Walling in the lane. She's fouled and will head to the free throw line. With one second on the shot clock. Natalie Hoff picks up her fourth foul. Brooke Walling, eight points on the evening. Well, if this game goes into overtime, both these teams are going to be saddled with some foul difficulty, but primarily Seattle Pacific. Interesting move here. The three-point sniper Oberg goes to the bench, and Maddie Granboys in the game. Wally free missed throw. the first. Yeah, she's 2 of 4 from the free throw line now. Second. That rattles in. Vikings, a lead of three. 115 left. And Mike Simonson needs to talk to his team, takes a timeout. Wow, who would have thought? SPU doing great things. 30 second timeout here called by the Falcons. And there's a look at the Falcon bench. Mike Simonson, you can see his head poking in as he Talks strategy with his squad down three with 115 remaining. An odd stat you don't see very often. His Falcons have not hit one three pointer all game. No, they have not. They haven't taken a ton. They've only taken seven. seven. Yeah. One problem for the Falcons is if you need to start fouling, who are you going to? You're going to have to bring players in off the bench to foul. Otherwise, you're going to be in big trouble. You're going to have to bring in some players who don't have a foul or more than one foul, and they're going to have to be the ones to make sure to commit the foul. Three Falcons with four fouls. Hoff is one of them. Ashley Alter kicks it outside. Kind of looks like they're thinking about a three-pointer, but Beren hears me and says, no, we're going for a two-pointer. Shot in the lane won't go. Ball out of bounds or a foul? No, it's a ball out of bounds off one of the Vikings. So it'll be a new shot clock. There's the shot, and it went off. It looks, well, went Daddy off the Vikings boys. for sure. Yeah, I think it was her. We're inside a minute left. 17 on the shot clock. Falcons down three. You don't need a three-point shot. Well, Alter. take one. For the tie, no, Brooke Walling the rebound. 41 seconds left, can the Vikings hang on? Avery Dykstra hands off to her sister Riley. Crowd on their feet here inside Carver Gym and Avery Dykstra is fouled. Anna Eddy commits the foul. Well, Avery Dykstra is probably not the Viking you wanted at the free throw line as she leads the team along with Truett Riley in free throw percentage, 83% on the year. So you could, be, you could find yourselves down by five right here. Or not. Seattle Pacific with some life. Natalie Hoff and Ashley Alter, potentially their final collegiate games if the game does not go their way, but Dykstra misses both. And at, it's still a three-point game. At the free throw line tonight, Western Washington 15 of 23, and Seattle Pacific 13 of 15. But 
Well, that was uncharacteristic right there of the Vikings from the free throw line. So with 30.3 seconds left, and there's just a fraction, four tenths difference between the shot and the game clock. I don't know what Mike Simonson wants to do. Do you want to take it all the way down for a three point shot? Or do you go ahead and try to get a bucket here, best bucket you can, foul and get into the fouling situation? Again, that brings up the situation. If you're gonna foul, you gotta make sure one of your star players doesn't foul out doing that. Strategy, the chess match between coaches. There well, if you're, if you're thinking three for Seattle Pacific, Ashley Alters, a 31% three-point shooter. Natalie Hoff will shoot from out there, but the, the players who have shot the most, Alter has shot over 100, and... Anna Eddy has shot nearly 150 on the year. So those are the two you would think. But again, you can get to the foul situation if you want to go there. And after you just saw the two missed free throws by Western Washington a second ago, maybe that's the way you're thinking. Let's go ahead and play the foul game. Western's going to put up full court pressure defense, not surprisingly. I wouldn't have expected anything different. Inside 30 seconds left. Potentially in the SPU season, if they don't win this one here, they're down three. You don't need a long three, but there is one and it's an air ball. Anna Eddy took the shot. And the Vikings go back to the free throw line as we may have an injured yeah, Hunter Buren. Falcon. Looks like she got shoulder. banged up a little bit on the rebounding situation. Official asking Carmen Dolfo whether she wants to advance the ball and what side she wants to take it out on. Oh, there's no question you want to advance the ball. Uh, that, in my mind, isn't even a question. There's the badly missed three, and Barron got her arm caught. Yeah, reaching and in. Immediately and went to her shoulder. Well, I don't fault the shot necessarily, but I think with the amount of time that you had, you didn't have to take it quite that quickly. You could have got another pass, maybe two, and still got a quality look. But right now you're in the situation where you're going to have to foul. You're going to have to hope that Western misses one of the free throws here. Actually, no, that's a non-shooting foul. But you're going, to, you're going to foul right here if you don't get a quick steal. Riley Dykstra inbounds directly in front of us. She gives it to Brooke Walling, who is fouled immediately by Natalie Hoff. And that is five on Hoff. So she will exit the ball game with 15 seconds left. Well... That's exactly my, my concern. When you have to foul, that you have your star player with four fouls forced into a situation where she had to foul. The elation inside Carver Jim as Walling makes it a four point game, gets her 10th point of the night. Well, Seattle Pacific has tested Western today. It looks like they're gonna come up a bit short. That was not even close on that free throw. Yeah, it was an infraction because it didn't get anything but glass. Falcons down four. Robert Lowry getting ready to interview the victorious coach. Right now, looks like Carmen Dolfo, but stranger things have happened in basketball. And there's a turnover, and that will seal it for Western yeah. Washington. Need to make some free throws, but a four-point lead and two free throws forthcoming. Heading to the line is Riley Dykstra. The fourth foul on Barry for the Falcons. Dykstra misses the free throw. Her sister missed two earlier. Now Riley misses the first trying to make it a true two-possession game, and she does. 
five point lead. Final 10 seconds. Can the Falcons have something up their sleeve? Five seconds left. They need to get a shot off. Hoff for three, it's an air ball. Two seconds left. Western Washington advances to the championship game tomorrow. They hold home court, win a close one, a five point victory for the Vikings. Game that was in doubt until the final minute, just like last night for the Falcons. This time they come up short. A great fought game by both teams here tonight. Neither team shot well at all. It was a struggle offensively. But at the end of four quarters, Western Washington did enough to win the game in advance and play another day in the GNAC Championship. Vikings 58, Falcons 53 as we await head coach Carmen Dolfo to join Robert Lowry. She is currently talking to her team right here in front of me courtside inside Carver Gym. Vikings only shot 39%, but that was better than the 31% for Seattle Pacific. Five point lead, five point win, I should say, for Western Washington. The GNAC regular season champions now have a chance for the tournament championship and the automatic bid into the NCAA tournament. They will get home court advantage again tomorrow and take on Montana State Billings as they defeated Central Washington earlier this afternoon. Head coach Carmen Dolfo ready to join Robert Lowry courtside inside Carver Gym. With Western Washington University head coach Carmen Dolfo, well, you've won 10 straight against Seattle Pacific, but when you look back over your recent meetings, Falcons played very, very tough tonight. What did they do, if anything, differently? Well, honestly, I think they played us tough every time we played them. They're a great team, and um, they just play great defense. They play well together. They have a really good, um, their offense is very active, and they're hard to guard. So we've been lucky to pull it out against them because they're a fabulous team. I've got to ask you about the play of Mason Oberg. A couple of big, big threes for the freshman. She shot him with a lot of confidence. How big were those threes to getting the Vikings the win? I mean, they've been huge. They were huge. Mason's been injured for us, so she kind of was hitting a lot for us and then tore her meniscus, and so she's kind of getting back into it now, but she's always had that confidence, and that's the great thing about her. She kind of has a swagger, and she's not afraid, and that really helped us tonight. Well, I know you don't have a lot of time to celebrate this victory because tomorrow it's Montana State Billings. Talk a little bit about uh, what the Yellow Jackets do and what you're going to need to do to win the GNAC championship. Well, they play great defense like SPU. Um, they're a very balanced team. Uh, they can all shoot the three, and they have a great inside game. So we've lost to them twice this year. So we're going to have to, you know, kind of get refocused, and, and uh, we're going to have to play together as a team, and we're going to have to match their defense. Well, congratulations on the win tonight, and we look forward to seeing the Vikings in the championship game tomorrow night. That's Carmen Dolfo. Let's send it back to Sean Wally at the desk. Thank you very much, Coach and Robert. Western Washington advances to the championship tomorrow against MSUB. 58-53, the Vikings were scared for a lot of the contest. SPU, a very well-fought game. Neither team shot well. A lot of turnovers for Western Washington. Foul trouble on both sides. Natalie Hoff actually fouled out at the very end. Man, a valiant effort from Mike Simonson's crew. They should be holding their heads high even yeah. though they lost this one. No, there's no, no question about it. Uh, Seattle Pacific, 58-53, a five-point win. Uh, this game was closer than that final score would indicate. And again, holding Western to 58 points. That shows you just what kind of defense Seattle Pacific put up against the Vikings tonight. At the end of the night, the fourth quarter, Vikings 18 points in the quarter, just 10 for Seattle Pacific. Add it all up in four quarters, it's a five point victory. And moving on to the championship game tomorrow against MSUB, that will be at 7.30, our second championship game. The first championship is the men's side at 5.15. St. Martin's 
taking on, and I called them as Cinderella earlier, and uh, Aaron Landon, the head coach of Seattle, or St. Martins, he kind of brought me up on that. He said, there's no Cinderella team in the great Northwest. We're talking about the Yellow Jackets of Montana State, or I should say the uh, Nighthawks of Northwest Nazarene University, who have had big back-to-back -back wins in this tournament from the sixth seeded position. That's the voice of Robert Lowry. Man, four more basketball games down. That's eight in two days. We've got two more. We yep. will see you tomorrow about 5 o'clock on the air. Join us then from Bellingham, Washington. Thank you for everybody here at GNAC TV. I'm Sean Wally. Good night from Bellingham.